Sat down with Joan Rivers just a couple of years back, and she revealed to me the private pain that fueled her humor, heartbreak over her husband, and her broken friendship with Johnny Carson. We will never forget Joan Rivers allowing us backstage down the stairs here in New York City. She would perform right up until the end. Hey, Joan. Yes, yes, sir. Are we bugging you? But much of America yes. first saw Joan on Ed Sullivan. Here is little Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers emerging from behind that curtain nearly 50 years ago. Weren't you pregnant on Ed Sullivan? Pregnant and you aren't allowed to say it. Soon we're going to hear the pitter-patter of little feet. And that was breaking ground. That was breaking ground to say pitter-patter of little feet. May I say, Mr. Sullivan, I'm delighted to be here. And hers was a groundbreaking and sometimes backbreaking journey. This is where my career has come to. I'm sitting on a stool that's coming apart. Okay. She invited us to her New York City apartment. The photographs everywhere, and us too. I usually don't let people come over. I must have been very sad or very drunk. <laughs> Joan took us back to her first days on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Right smack then and there. Changed my life. Weren't you the first and only permanent host? I was the first permanent guest host, man, woman, a child, yeah. And only. And that gig with Carson would lead to another offer, to do late night comedy on another network. And as soon as I got the Fox show, I called Johnny and said, Johnny, I've got it. And he hung up, hung up on me. Never, never spoke to me again. But her show was soon over. And so was her friendship with Carson. And as Joan struggled publicly, her husband was struggling privately. He took his life in 1987. He becomes a great pain and great anger is really where it comes from. And with my husband, I had both barrels. I'm still not over his suicide. I'm still furious with him. They say to me, oh, you'll go to heaven, you'll meet Edgar. I'll kill him. Joan, a single mother, was completely alone personally and privately. And then the call, a daytime talk show in the works up against Oprah and Donahue at the Emmys. And the winner is, I'm shaking, Joan Rivers. <laughs> Two years ago, I couldn't get a job in this business. I could not get a job. It's so sad that he's not here because it was my husband, Edgar Rosenberg, who always said, you can turn things around. A decade later, she was back again on the red carpet, asking and saying anything. She talked openly about her many plastic surgeries and how she explained it in the beginning. Her daughter, still a baby. Of course, my eyes were black and blue. So it was carrying Melissa, and no one did their eyes in those days. So people would say to me, what happened to you? And I'd say, the baby punched me in the eyes. And they bought it. People were so stupid in those days. Poor Melissa. <laughs> Poor Melissa. Kids go, <laughs> kid hit me in the eyes. <laughs> and it turned out, behind all of that humor, humility. I'm proud of nothing, my darling. I am swimming upstream. <laughs> I don't know where it's gone. If you don't do what you want to do, you're a fool. Joan Rivers sitting down with us, and Barbara Walters with us now. Joan was your friend. Was she the same privately as she was publicly? Well, publicly we know. Brash, she would say anything. She would say all the things that women wanted to say and, and perhaps didn't. Privately, she was very elegant, a house full of antiques and, and silver, uh, and rather quiet. And I'm curious, Barbara, if she had any idea in these final days about the support that came in from all over the world, what would she have made of it? You know, we've all said she liked nothing more than to work. And to know that she had this kind of an audience, even when she was unconscious, I think she would have been smiling. I will miss her. Barbara Walters with us tonight on her friend Joan Rivers. And we'll have much more coming up tonight on Nightline. So many people remembering Joan Rivers tonight.